I want to share with you guys something really cool that I learned that um, just makes me see Yeshua in a fresh light, and Revelation is always so encouraging. So, we read a lot in the Old Testament, and we don't always understand nuances or um, details, especially when it comes to the law, um, Torah, the Torah. Um, the book of Leviticus is full of laws that um, maybe sometimes we just skim through or we don't even really look at anymore, but there is a lot of revelation that points to Yeshua. And if we look in chapter 17, verse 11, um, it talks about never eating the blood. Actually, the chapter 17 of Leviticus uh, in my Bible specifically is titled Eating Blood Forbidden. And... Um, it actually has to do with the soul of a being that um, the Hebrews believed that the soul of a creature is literally found in the blood. It is essentially one, the blood and the soul. Um, just like physically, we know that our, our heart is located in um, this general location or, you know, <laughs> the brain hopefully is, um, is up here. You know, we, we know these inner organs <laughs> are, um, are placed specifically throughout our being. We know where to find them. There's the age old question of where exactly is a person's soul or, you know, it can sound very spiritual or become spiritualized. Um, Let's read the verse. So verse 11 of chapter 17 in the book of Leviticus says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for, for the soul. And, um, yeah, and it, so it's basically in verse 14 of the same chapter of chapter 17, it says, because the life of every creature is its blood, um, or in the Hebrew translation, the soul of the creature is in its blood. That is why I have said to the Israelites, you must not eat the blood of any creature because the life of every creature is its blood. So he's, you know, repeating this. Anyone who eats it uh, must be cut off. And so that was verse 14. But, um, it's such a beautiful thing when we realize that Yeshua shed his blood. You know, he poured out his very life blood and, um, and to, you know, realize that we have been washed in his blood, that he didn't pour out his blood in vain. It wasn't just the consequence of being beaten or crucified, but it was actually the blood pouring out of him, um, that makes us new creatures. And so he was literally giving his blood, his soul. He was pouring out his soul for us. And so when we say that we have been forgiven by the blood, made clean, made righteous by the blood, um, justified, now we are um, made right with God. There's peace with God through the blood. And um, just all these beautiful promises you know that we've been given a new heart a heart of flesh and that God made a new covenant with his blood there's so much revelation um, we find there and so I guess <laughs> the moral of the story is that Jesus pouring out his blood equals Jesus pouring out his soul and giving his soul to us and um, side note is that this is I believe related to kosher meats and, um, you know, the, the Orthodox Jewish tradition of making sure the meat is kosher. In other words, um, not having any blood in the meat. So, uh, <laughs> thank you, Yeshua, for, for pouring out your blood for us. It was the most priceless gift and you gave, you gave us your soul. And so now we give you our soul.